hello guys welcome back to the channel so today it's just me finishing up the story i started telling you guys about the blizzard we had here in north dakota it actually lasted a little over 48 hours and it was quite intense uh, the footage you are watching right now was before the blizzard this was the very beginning and uh, we actually had uh, all the snow melted around here and here you can see that we uh, the snowfall began and then we also had uh, the wind that picked up we were projected to have at least 21 inches of snow so i thought about just filming what it looks like uh, before the snowfall and then uh, i planned on doing another uh, filming after the snowfall so this is what the environment kind of looks like uh, before the snowfall uh, this was I think late in the evening so it's a little bit darker uh, there was a intense cloud cover and the wind was beginning to pick up so this is what the area uh, looked like and you can see that um, not very many vehicles are moving around uh, most people had already heeded their warning uh, they got their supplies that they needed for a couple of days and people were hunkered in so here you can see uh, what the road the main road would typically look like you can see my tires touching the ground uh, here you just have uh, barely half an inch or a quarter of an inch of snow on the ground uh, but the snow is coming down pretty good uh, the temperatures were about uh, low 20s, so um, just below freezing, enough to keep the snow from melting, and uh, the wind was just beginning to pick up. Uh, I put the Hummer in the high setting, so if you look in the rear of the Hummer, you can see that it is sitting pretty tall. Uh, my Homer H2 is a 2003 Homer with the 6.0 liter V8 Vortec engine uh, and uh, it has a 4 speed automatic transmission with uh, all wheel drive uh, during standard driving, uh, 4 wheel drive high, 4 wheel drive low and a locking differential in the rear so that's the setup that uh, the homers came with i think all of them have that same setup uh, the only difference would be the uh, air suspension in the rear and then you could also option other things like the sunroof um, the fog lights etc etc so yeah here i'm just moving around you know showing the homer uh, doing a quick walk around so you guys can uh, get a sense of what the home might look like and also see what the background and uh, the surrounding areas look like uh, before a, a blizzard that's supposed to dump so much snow. So this is about 12 hours into the 12, 24 hours into the uh, blizzard. And you can see that quite a substantial amount of snow has fallen. Uh, the thing that you won't see here uh, is how high some of the snow drifts are. Uh, it's quite impressive, but in the evening, uh, it's very difficult to gauge how deep some of those uh, drifts are, but it's quite impressive. Uh, you can't see the contours, that's the problem, without the sunshine so you can't determine how tall some of those uh, drifts are everything is just white so uh, it just reminds you about uh, people who were out here in the prairie back in the day how a uh, somebody could leave the home and say hey i'm going to the garage and they never never come back because they get out there they get blinded by the high winds and snow and uh, low visibility and then they start heading off in a, the wrong direction thinking they're heading towards their barn and once that happens everybody now has to you know, get out there and then the, the only way they can locate you back in the day was by shouting out your name everybody spreads out then they have like uh, one person who is uh, the spotter you spread out scream 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 if anybody hears the person call back then they start heading in that direction uh, pretty dangerous times when you have a blizzard uh, 
um, also they advise to stay home because if you are out and about and you get into a situation that uh, requires emergency personnel you are not only endang endangering your life you are equally endangering the life of all the people that will be coming out uh, to your rescue so uh, it's very very unfair to be out in this kind of treacherous weather so there you have the Hummer H2 I was playing in the snow having fun in the deep soft snow as you guys can see uh, the Hummer with its weight was just plowing through uh, but unbeknownst to me in front of me there was a huge snow uh, drift that was quite uh, longer than I, I thought it was so uh, I thought I should get out do a quick video walk around and then I will uh, do a running start and blast through that snow drift which is right there you know uh, as you guys can see <laughs> with the camera and even with my naked eye I couldn't gauge how deep that was so um, the thing with uh, snow, heavy snow fall like this, is that you have to keep up with the cleanup. Otherwise, the snow uh, gets to a level where it's just too much. Uh, you start cleaning and it takes forever. So every little bit that you do in time is a stitch uh, that saves nine. So even though we knew we still had 24 hours ahead of us, you can see there where uh, my body was uh, cleaning out the snow already using the skid steer. Uh, equipment that we call the Bobcat so this is after the first 24 hours just to show you guys about how much snow we had uh, you can see the snow is coming down pretty hard and it is drifting making all of those huge uh, mounds and piles of snow which impede the movement of traffic uh, either on foot or in a vehicle also the winds uh, were quite high about 50 miles an hour which for those in the metric system would equate to roughly about 80 kilometers an hour so with uh, such high winds as the snow drops to the ground uh, it gets pushed by the wind and then it uh, wherever the wind slows down enough if there is an obstacle then the wind slows down and as it loses uh, velocity it drops the snow and that's how those uh, snow drifts are built open country is usually easy uh, the highways they are easy because it's all open and clear uh, out here in the prairie you don't see many trees close to the highway or obstacles so for the most part the highways would be clear uh, but then the ditches on both sides of the highway would be very treacherous because there you can have uh, a lot of uh, very deep snow you know just hiding uh, trenches and other uh, very dangerous uh, objects so uh, on these two days the highway uh, that links the northeast and the northwest of the state called highway 2 was actually closed uh, all the way to the Montana border to the west and uh, at least I think to Devil's Lake to the east uh, beyond Devil's Lake conditions were a bit better that allowed travel also uh, going down south all the way down to north west uh, South Dakota and uh, even the central south Canada most of those were uh, uh, impacted by this uh, heavy storm system it even went at as far as uh, altitudes in uh, Colorado all the way down to Colorado and uh, especially altitudes in Montana that were very very severely impacted uh, with lots and lots of snow uh, with this uh, storm system so it was a huge huge uh, system that was just hanging over the city of Minot uh, some conjecture that it appeared to be over Minot because that's where the primary radar is located in this area not only for North Dakota but there's a major uh, radar system there uh, but apparently it was very close to Minot uh, 
Minot was very close to being the epicenter of uh, this massive system that dumped so, many, so much snow and uh, high winds. The good news is that for our area here, we did not have any power outages and uh, as far as I know, uh, apparently I haven't heard of anyone that got injured. Uh, later on in the video, you guys will see, I actually went to town after conditions got really uh, much better and the advisory was taken down. So here I was uh, assessing that bank and I thought I could make a run for it and this is on the second day uh, when the bank had just gotten really really huge. <laughs> that wasn't a good idea. It was not a good idea but I, I was like ah well what are homers made for you know. I might as well have fun while uh, there was so much snow on the ground. Uh, we were all you know bunkered in place we couldn't go anywhere and so i thought oh i could turn that into a playground and try to ram that uh, snow pile but uh, there you guys can see the aftermath i couldn't beat the uh, the drift so i got stuck right there i'm stuck and uh, i have the engine running and i came out to assess and you guys can see how as far as i pushed um, I wasn't coming at with any real velocity so I didn't have any momentum to actually push through and break uh, the snow uh, drift and this is when I abandoned the Homer I was like ah, I'm done I don't think I'm getting out of here tonight winds were still high uh, the wind chill was getting really bad and the Sun was already setting and this is the next day after the storm see how beautiful it is and now you can actually see the contours of some of those drifts. Uh, they look very beautiful, but they are very treacherous. They will get your vehicle stuck, they will get your vehicle hung up, and uh, they will hide obstacles that you won't be able to see until it's too late. So uh, at times underneath the drifts, you can have uh, sharp objects, nails, pieces of wood that will do serious damage uh, to your vehicle. So. Uh, if you ever happen to be in an area that you are unfamiliar with, uh, do be careful when you see snow, snow drifts like this. Uh, they tend to accumulate where you have some kind of obstacle that disturbs the flow of uh, snow when you have high winds. So this is in the morning and I'm trying to assess what all I need to do to get the Hummer out of there. You can see the Camry, how high the snow went and if you look further ahead, uh, there's a big snow pile there and there was a full-size pickup truck buried underneath that snow. Uh, back in the day people would typically have used maybe uh, horse-drawn plows and then also shovels so this was super super bad breaking work uh, but thank god I, uh, I have my body and he has uh, that skid steer which really really makes life easier. Uh, you can see there there was a lot of snow that got uh, pushed into the engine compartment and when i fired up the hummer uh, for a little bit the engine sounded really muffled i was worried because um, the hummer has a viscous fan a viscous coupling for the fan and uh, that clutch you know you don't really want to put too much resistance uh, when it's cold yeah it doesn't have much resistance but as it starts warming up it builds up resistance it's got some kind of hydraulic fluid in it uh, so it's good because if you get uh, take your Hummer modding then you don't have too much uh, problems but uh, if you had a fixed fan that was attached to the crankshaft uh, that becomes a problem if you take it modding or there is a sudden stoppage of the fan could potentially affect the crankshaft and uh, for aircraft if you if that ever happens which would be like a plane uh, landing and then the propeller making contact with the ground uh, that's a hard stoppage then they, they would probably have to tear apart the engine and make sure everything is good so very expensive mistake out there you can see a John Deere tractor using a PTO to 
uh, attached to a snow blower and it is uh, blowing the snow. It has a chute which can be controlled from the cab and uh, it's a very very effective setup. Uh, you know tractors are very versatile tools and uh, it can clear out a really large area within a short period of time using that setup. Uh, on the other hand you have the skid steer in this case the bobcat and it's it, what it does mostly is uh, pushing the snow as opposed to the tractor that you guys saw earlier which would uh, pick up the snow and then uh, blow it out through a chute uh, the danger being that if you throw it towards uh, persons animals pets or uh, property maybe a vehicle uh, it picks up everything including rocks so you could potentially break somebody's windshield or drop a rock very hard on somebody's uh, noggin and, <laughs> and uh, that's not desirable the other thing is uh, if you are going to be moving snow around uh, it's very important to have a sense of what uh, the area was like before the snowfall that way you don't uh, go and uh, bust maybe a fire hydrant or other obstacles so it's very very good important to have a thorough knowledge of the area you will be clearing especially if you are using heavy equipment most of this heavy equipment they run on diesel very efficient uh, <coughs> they typically have a constant speed so you jump in, start everything up, then you put it on the walk mode, the engine uh, cranks up and the wheels, the powertrain, all of that is uh, hydraulically powered. So the hydraulic starts circulating and then uh, it's kind of on demand. You open up valves and then they start spinning the corresponding tire or spinning the corresponding shaft or power equipment. So it's a very, very uh, efficient and nice use of hydraulics. To power not only the wheels but also uh, other parts of the machinery so there we're trying to clear as much as we can or uh, he's trying to clear as much as he can uh, around the Hummer and that way uh, I will be able to put it in the four-wheel drive lock up the rear and then uh, drive forward matter of fact I actually had a little bit of difficulty driving forward so he had to use the bucket and push me give me a little notch from behind uh, but I had it in four-wheel drive low and uh, that was able to get me dislodged and uh, going so there I am inside do apologize I haven't had any time it's just been crappy weather out here so the interior has not yet been detailed uh, it still needs a few cosmetic touches to get it to where I would love for it to be and uh, with the Hummer free I decided to drive out to town to get some much needed and essential supplies So there I just crossed the train tracks uh, over the past 48 hours we did not hear many trains go by uh, shortly after I finished this recording I could see uh, I think two trains went by but they were uh, moving at a very slow pace compared to their typical uh, speed along those tracks I believe during the blizzard uh, they didn't want the trains moving because in case of whatever for whatever reason if they had to stop uh, typically they would have some vans with four-wheel drive go out to the train pick the crew up or swap out crews depending on whatever they needed uh, but I think with the blizzard they didn't want to take any chances so they basically uh, stopped operations of uh, the trains uh, I don't know if that's exactly what happened maybe there was too much snow that buffeted the sounds and I couldn't hear but uh, for 48 hours it was really really silent and uh, I, I think I believe that they either slowed down the traffic or they basically stopped for 48 hours 
especially out here in Western North Dakota. So on the right of your screen, you guys can see a train that is stopped. That is a grain train. And uh, what is particular about this train, you can't really see on this video, but uh, I could see it with my eyes, is that there's uh, drifts around the, the wheels. So I think the train had been there for a, quite a few hours. And I wouldn't be surprised because the next town is not too far from here, about maybe three miles or four miles. So probably they stopped just before a major crossing and uh, sent the crew to town to wait out the weather. So I found that quite interesting and uh, yeah, so that's a grain train, unit train, all the same kind of uh, commodity. and you can see the roads also they're uh, clear but i am not sure going eastward and i didn't venture uh, beyond the town going uh, westward so i just did a short about nine mile drive uh, the roads were clear but you can see uh, where some of the drifts melted on the road and beneath what you see like water there is actually ice uh, but thank god and uh, thankfully the Hummer H2 is a uh, full-time all-wheel drive and then on demand four-wheel drive high or four-wheel drive low or four-wheel drive low with lockers engaged in the rear so you have quite a few combinations there depending on what you intend to do with your Hummer H2 and uh, I was very satisfied uh, it drove really uh, solid even though uh, you could barely per perceive that there was something sketchy, maybe slippery, uh, you could barely perceive the ice on the wheel. But uh, I am pretty sure if I had a rear wheel drive, it would have been uh, more exciting going <laughs> to town driving along those roads. So here I'm, I am pulling into the first gas station, trying to get some gas. Uh, but because of the bad weather they've been closed i think for the past 48 hours uh, they posted up some signs uh, the, but someone has been there to clean the parking lot as you guys can see they still had fuel you could get fuel from the island but i needed some uh, supplies from the general store that they have inside so i moved over to the store and the doors were closed uh, there you can see those drifts they are quite tall it's a lot of snow uh, but for some reason it doesn't really show well on the camera and uh, if you had a lower vehicle even the snow you see right there you could easily very easily get stuck so even the snow there on the left it's, it's quite a bit of snow and you can see where the snow went up to right up to the door handle lots of trucks in the back uh, you don't want to venture out in this kind of weather especially if you are going to a remote well site so uh, as of this recording i could look at the road conditions and many many roads in this area were still uh, closed uh, they typically advise if the major road is closed don't try to take a detour and take a back road the back roads will be more dangerous because they have obstacles, they have trees, they have houses, they have fences, and all of those obstacles will slow down the snow and cause massive drifts. Uh, here you can see on the right there is a skid steer that is in the ditch. How did it get there? I have no idea, but there it is, uh, kind of uh, like a cat right there. And uh, yeah, it's there in the ditch. <laughs> so yeah just very treacherous conditions and uh that's 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 what life is like uh, around here so i am heading to the second gas station that's a traffic light stop and then turn left and uh, lots of people are out and about trying to get gas the first thing uh, you always want to have uh, above half a tank in conditions like this in case for Maybe if in case your tr vehicle, your truck slides off the road and you have to wait for a couple of hours to be rescued. So, 
still kind of sketchy most of the snow that you see right there uh, the sun is out so the snow is beginning to melt and then it gets cold and it uh, freezes so you have little patches of ice covered with snow or underneath the snow so we're heading there to the gas station oh you guys see the price of gas yes it is there I can see the price of diesel and this is coming back into town and I decided to just take a quick look around and you can see that since the town is built up a lot of the snow coming from the northwest uh, got slowed down and uh, dumped into town so like on my right that's a pretty deep ditch but you can see how it's all filled up with snow uh, on my right that snow pile was completely gone so we have another gig gigantic uh, snow pile over there uh, that ditch on the right it's very very deep but now it's all filled up with snow so it doesn't look like it's dangerous but you could easily get stuck or damage your vehicle in case you slide into that ditch uh, you can see the amount of snow that fell again this is just a very slow video but for me i just uh, find it fascinating because i know within about a week most of the snow that you see out here will be gone because uh, like for example today we were in the 20s and with the sun coming through it was able to warm up vehicles and even the ground and quite a bit of the snow melted turned to water and was uh, percolating down into the ground was being absorbed so I know in about a week most of this will be gone we will be in the 40s and even 50s and uh, that's well above uh, 33 degrees when uh, where water freezes so that's why I do some of these videos so that maybe you know in a month's time a year's time I can go back look and uh, think about the crazy blizzard that we had and everybody was under lockdown for two days but uh, <clears throat> the Hummer saved the day because I was able to travel around with the Hummer there you can see the old school that is uh, abandoned lots of snow around the front door uh, over there you have the county that's the county uh, grader that is uh, fitted with two blades one up front one to the side and it's clearing out the county roads uh, I should say that this county they keep it very very uh, they maintain their roads very well which is something great even the dirt roads as soon as uh, they see a few ridges on there the roads are uneven they're out there with the blades you know they keep up the maintenance which is something great most appreciated by the residents so here you can see uh, certain areas depending on their location you know some would have uh, more snow on the ground others less but here you see all the trees around they caused the snow to, to be dumped right there. That first part is not cleared, so I'll just keep going. It looks kind of clean and okay, but they still have a few snow drifts on the ground, so it makes it dangerous for me. I don't want to take chances. And here we are back and uh, that was pretty much just a quick tour to show you guys uh, the aftermath of the massive uh, snow blizzard that we had here uh, I'm glad we didn't have any power outage I didn't hear of anybody having any injuries and uh, so glad to have made it through even though I got the Hummer stuck but I was able to get it out with the help of my body with the bobcat and uh, take it to town uh, along the road I didn't see any vehicles in the ditches I didn't see any uh, crashed vehicles so that was awesome the truck drivers you guys could see them at the, uh, at the truck stop all of them most of them were there didn't see any trucks on the road uh, because I think the road was actually still uh, still pretty much closed for most uh, for traffic so 
there you have the tractor using the PTO to and the snow blower attached to the back uh, PTO power takeoff. So here is the Homer. It survived. I looked underneath. No fluids leaking. I could hear the fan, so I know that uh, the snow did not go in there and completely block the fan and uh, after driving you can see most of the snow under that made its way uh, into the engine compartment it's melted uh, the air shocks in the back air springs are still working you can see how high the back is sitting so yeah the Homer <laughs> took me through uh, this two-day blizzard and uh, it did really really amazing and uh, I'm happy with the Homer and uh, well if you made it this far guys uh, please consider giving me a thumbs up it helps the channel and also subscribing to the channel those two things are the most help uh, to me and i will be very very uh, grateful and indebted to you for uh, helping me out and helping the channel grow well i hope to see you guys on the next video uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, feel free to skip or you know get to the part that is of interest to you Bye now.